Hello and welcome back to FPV Reviews. Today we're having a look at the ready-made RC 1.3 GHz video receiver and testing it in real-world conditions to see if it lives up to the claims on the ready-made RC website. We've been using an older ready-made RC receiver, which was purchased about eight years ago, with very good results. And we were curious to see if this new version can replace it. Let's see what the website has to say about this product. They claim it will outperform all the other options from all other sources, and that they are the absolute best 1.3 GHz, 1.2 GHz, and 900 MHz receivers you can buy, period. The site also mentions that there are significant changes in the design since July of 2023, and this is now November of 2024. It claims greater range, among other things. The site specifically states that the reason for the increased performance is the saw filter. It claims that Comtech no longer produces tuner modules, but falls short of stating exactly which components are used in this receiver, stating that they are multiple internal improvements. It can receive a wide array of the lower frequencies on 15 channels, which are commonly used for FPV, including 900 megahertz. For the U.S., the legal frequencies, and the ones that most VTXs which are sold there are locked to, are 1258 and 1280, and it can receive both of those. We're using Crossfire on 915 MHz for control, and it's limited to 500 milliwatts output with dynamic power, which is known to create issues for 1.2 and 1.3 GHz video systems but we're using a notch filter. More on that later, but we do feel that for long range, the use of Crossfire and other 900 megahertz band control systems, such as with ELRS, is very typical, and its use is to be expected for anyone serious about doing long range FPV flying. Nevertheless, as you'll see, we also have some physical separation from our 900 megahertz gear. The receiver that we'll be comparing it to is the Matek VRX, Dash 1G3-V2. While the ready-made receiver does not list a sensitivity value in their specs, the Matek lists its sensitivity at negative 95 dBm. While the Matek was widely produced, it's no longer in production. However, large quantities are still available from Asian vendors, and the price point is very similar to the ready-made RC receiver, making it a good starting point for comparison. So let's see what comes in the box. Hey, it's almost worth the price for this cool keychain. While I can't guarantee that this will come in the box if you buy one, Ready Made RC is known for throwing in little extras on occasion when you make a purchase. The build quality is nice, and it does come with an LCD display and a handy number chart printed right on the casing, so you can see at a glance what frequency you're on or adjust it very easily with the button. It comes with a solid mounted SMA connector, so no worries about that part of it being fragile. If you're using linear polarized antennas, this PCB dipole that it comes with is probably about as good as it gets for an Omni. You could use it on either the aircraft or the ground station, depending on what you're doing and where you plan on flying. So let's power it on and set it up. Unfortunately, it did not come with a 2.1 mm barrel connector, but we have plenty of them around, so it was not a problem. As mentioned, we'll be using these TBS notch filters for both receivers, which are also designed by Alex from Video Aerial Systems. His name sure comes up a lot in FPV when talking about antennas. Speaking of antennas, we'll be using the crosshair antenna designed by him and sold by ready-made RC. These are excellent and have a gain of just over 10 dBi, so they're very versatile and good for medium range applications. We also happen to have two of them for this test. We'll be mounting both receivers and antennas to these handy boxes that were designed and laser cut. Both setups are identical.
So we have our usual ground station set up in the car. We have a telemetry antenna, the RFP900X. Over here we have the Crossfire antenna on a SMA extension cable, so we can get more gain. And we're flying the Gemini B2 Pro airframe with standard 60 cell Tesla style lithium ion battery. It's equipped with a 2 watt video transmitter from Flywoo. And there's only one video transmitter, so the test will be all about receiving. So over here we have the setup we're usually using, which is a pepper box antenna made by Video Aerial Systems, Alex Greaves, also known as IB Crazy. We have that. We also have a 5.8 gigahertz repeater that's going over to the car, to the screen in the car. And we've got our laptop set up there with Mission Planner, so we can monitor the telemetry. So here is the setup that we're primarily interested in today. We have our, our antenna setups that we looked at earlier. This is the Maytech over here on the left. Each are powered by a separate lithium ion battery, so they're completely independent. They're at the same height. They're both isolated away from the steel table here by this empty plastic bin. And they're separated a bit from each other, so there's no shouldn't be much reflection or anything going on. If so, it would be equal. So over here we have the ready-made RC, the 2024 edition that, that we're testing. Um, so the exact same setup on both. And on both we're also using this notch filter. So that notch filter is installed on both at the moment. And they're using the same crosshair antennas, identical. Polarization is the same, everything is the same. Down here, uh, we have more of the permanent setup, but it's the exact same equipment on both sides. We have this Radio Shack uh, signal amplifier down here, and then we have this Foxtech uh, DVR. So we'll be turning those on in a bit. And then the identical setup over here. So we have the, the same. DVR and the same signal amplifier split. They're exactly the same, and we'll see how they perform. And where we're headed is out there. Um, not sure how much we're going to be able to see here, but yeah, there's there's some islands out there, and they're about 17 to 20 kilometers away. So we're going to set up an auto mission out there to those islands and we'll see how it goes for these for these two and uh, for these two video receivers as a comparison switch into auto and off we go. And off the airplane goes. Zoom back out here. There we go. So let's get inside the car and fly it out there. See how these do. Right after takeoff, you can notice a slight difference in the colors, with the ready-made RC receiver having lighter colors. 
For most of us, this is not really a concern either way, and we really want to see how they perform at range. While flying over the ocean, we also notice that the Matek has slightly better contrast with waves, objects such as these ships, and OSD outlines defined slightly sharper. Again, not really a concern, as mostly those of us who fly long-range analog just use our live FPV feed for navigation, and we don't expect to read license plates anyway. That's why we use various kinds of action cameras to capture those kinds of details. At 5 kilometers distance from home, things really don't look much different between the two. At 10 kilometers, we start to see some signal degradation from both systems, and some frame jumping from the ready-made RC feed. On an unrelated topic, we have also lost most of our telemetry connectivity from the RFD900X SIK radios. But this is why we have the minimum OSD streaming Mavlink data over the video feed. At 15 kilometers, it's more of the same, just to a greater extent, and with noticeable snow from both systems. At 19 kilometers, and less than one kilometer to our destination, both signals are very degraded. The ready-made RC signal is no longer usable with the Matek just barely hanging in there. Not a worry for the Gemini Pro, because we have an autopilot flying, and we still have our Pepperbox antenna with 14 dBi gain and legacy ready-made RC receiver working well, giving a much more solid signal at this distance. At 20 kilometers distance, it's debatable whether the aircraft could be safely navigated using either video signal from either of these receivers. But I guess it could be argued that the Matek system would be possible to use, although not a great idea. Due to the placement of the VTX antenna on the aircraft, there is a slightly better signal with the plane pointed towards home. This is actually a good safety feature, at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. We'll show the flight home in its entirety at 20 times the normal speed so that you can see how the signal gradually improves as the plane gets closer to home. Both of these video feeds were cropped in editing. The actual feed has a much wider angle and is similar with both systems. Once the last waypoint is reached, the aircraft goes into RTL, return to launch mode, and starts to descend toward the home position. An interesting thing happens upon returning home when the aircraft flies behind the home position and on the side of the antennas, heading towards the back side of both antennas. The crosshair receiver antennas are very directional and have poor coverage relatively in the rear direction. The interesting thing is that the ready-made RC receiver actually seems to do better than the Matek in this specific circumstance. Each RF environment is different, with their own sources of interference, multipath disruptions, and their own challenges for the equipment to deal with. So the results of such a test as this might be affected depending on what other specific equipment you're using and other transmission sources in the area. It is also not the same thing to do a test of difficult conditions at close range, often referred to as a penetration test, as it is to do an ultimate range test in good conditions. That being said, this flying area and the equipment I'm using for the test are very typical. Choosing either of these receivers is not really going to solve any major issues for you. The results are really too close. That being said, most FPV pilots do care the most about range. 
Ready-Made RC does care about the products they sell. This is not a bad receiver. It would probably work just fine for the vast majority of FPV pilots. The difference in ultimate range between these two receivers was only about 5%, so we can keep that in mind when making purchasing decisions. We hope that this helps you make an informed decision, and we do look forward to testing more products in the future which can help extend our range and get out there even further. We also hope that this test helps ReadyMade RC to see where there might be room for improvement in the product, because when that happens, we all benefit. We'll continue to support them and recommend their website, their products and services, because they do offer very good product support, and they offer a lot of products which we, we all benefit from, and they're a very useful resource when ordering things online for your FPV experience. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. So as you can see, their main feed through a pepper box in the legacy ready-made receiver is started to, the signal's degraded and there's some snow, but it's completely flyable. It's actually doing quite well. And let's go look at the other two our test particles here. Let's see. It's a bit hard to see. This, this is the Maytec. You can see it's a... Uh, might be a little worse than the other one, which would be as expected, but it's kind of hanging in there. Uh, there's some snow, some frame jumping, but the, uh, the ready-made, the new ready-made RC video receiver is kind of having some major issues here. So it's actually much worse than expected. Hard to see here. There's a lot of static and uh, a lot of jumping around in the frames. A little bit unexpected there.